Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today, we're gonna to be talking about a question that one of my viewers brought up. Is the AR pistol too loud uh, to be really useful as a home defense gun? Uh, and in my opinion, yes, okay? It, it, it's a great gun, it's a great novelty. I like shooting it. Uh, this is a seven and a half inch barrel. I've got 10 and a half inch barrels as well. Um, you know, lots of fun to shoot, uh, but it, it, it is extremely loud, even with the linear comp that I have on here. Okay, that's the Quo Valley linear comp. Uh, it's designed to send more of the noise downrange. Despite that, I have to double up on my ear protection when I shoot this, okay? Now, if I'm at a, an outdoor range that's covered, right, uh, it, it's louder because that, that sound echoes back down. And if I'm at an indoor location, it is even louder okay because that sound now echoes back even more so the the whole idea with the with the, with the short barrels right is that it's a lot easier to maneuver indoors um and uh you know, my opinion on that is for for most of us right uh doing in a home defense type of situation we're not doing a whole lot of maneuvering okay so uh there's a difference between the way we would handle a home defense type of situation, all right, home defense type of situation versus um, how special forces teams, let's say, do room clearing, okay? Uh, they're on a stack, one on top of the other. Um, you know, they're doing like timed drills. I'm sure that in timed drills, uh, having a barrel that is maybe a couple of inches shorter uh, will facilitate will basically allow the team to be I don't know a few seconds faster through the drill. Okay, we're not training like that. Okay, um, our most likely you know most likely uh, type of home defense type of scenario is we are let's say behind a position of cover. Let's say behind our bed, right in the bedroom or in the basement or wherever. But we're in a stationary position. And we are allowing the threat to come to us. It's not likely that we're doing room clearing, but even if we are doing room clearing, uh, where you we would most likely be working alone or uh, with one maybe one other person, and then that's kind of iffy. Like how much training have we had with them? You know, so it's not like um, uh, it's not like a, a special force team that has been drilling repetitively. Uh, so that it's going off like clockwork, okay? Uh, a couple of extra inches on the barrel, I don't think are going to make a difference. Um, what I think is going to make a difference is basically flash banging yourself, right? Because every time you shoot this indoors, um, especially if you don't, haven't like doubled up on your ear protection, it, it's essentially like you're being flash banged. I'll shoot the gun now. You, you'll, you're not going to see a whole lot of flash because it's not really that dark, but you'll, you'll see some flash, okay? So there's a flash there. If in, in if the light was even less, uh, what happens is the uh, basically you stop, you, you lose the ability to see your reticle, uh, you momentarily lose the ability to see your target. Okay, uh, so the the flash, uh, you know, as it gets darker, the flash becomes more and more overwhelming. Uh, the linear comp that I put on it really, you know, it helps, but it doesn't help a whole lot with the noise and the flash. Uh, the special forces teams usually have suppressors on. Okay, so and and the most important part, the most important thing that the suppressor does is that it reduces the 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 uh, the flash, right? Because the flash is basically a here I am, shoot me sign. Okay, especially if you get outdoors and you start shooting, you know everybody knows exactly where you are if you don't have a suppressor to to bring down that 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 muzzle flash. Okay, um, so so now. Here's the thing with uh, I have shotguns with suppressors. If you have like a 16 inch rifle, you put a suppressor on it, and now becomes like a 20 inch barrel, right? Because it lengthens it up. Um, if you have let's say a, a 10 and a half inch barrel, you put a suppressor on that, now it becomes a 14 inch barrel. Okay, if you have a seven and a half, you put a suppressor on that, you know, now it becomes like a 10 inch barrel. So the suppressor, um, in my opinion, kind of negates the benefits of um, uh, of going of moving to the shorter. The shorter barrel because if you gotta, you know, it, 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 it to me it makes more sense to just stay with a 16 inch barrel, okay? Uh, stay with the 16 inch, inch barrel so that you don't need the suppressor, so that the noise is still kind of manageable, uh, you know, with, with some ear protection, um, even at least with the plugs, right? With the 16 inch barrel, maybe you can just get away with the plugs if that's all you have. Um, ideally, you'd rather have earmuffs. Um, I always keep 
electronic earmuffs in my safe, right? Wherever my rifle is, I got earmuffs for both me and my wife, right? So we can't, we got to be able to communicate with each other. I also got to be able to hear what's going on around the house, if, if there's a door opening or a window breaking. So, so maintaining my hearing is an important part of the self-defense, of the home defense plan. You have to maintain uh, your ability to hear. So that's why I, I keep electronic earmuffs wherever I keep wherever I keep my guns in my house okay if I go to get the guns I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the earmuffs as well okay so um, let's let's talk really quickly about the power loss okay so I've done videos where I tested where, where I put the seven and a half uh, I shot this through its chronograph um, these the seven and a half inch barrel gets about 640 foot pounds of energy okay so basically this is like a uh, like a 44 magnet in terms of, of, of energy, right? For, you have a high end 357 or low end or medium 44 Magnum, that's what you're getting. You're basically losing about half the power, right? The Out of a 16 inch barrel, you're usually getting somewhere around 1,100, 1,200 foot pounds of energy. Um, so you're getting about 640 with this. So you're losing half your power. Okay? On the 10 and a half, um, it, it drops, but not as much. On the 10 and a half, your, it drops down to about uh, 950 foot pounds, 900 foot pounds sometimes. So it depends on what ammo you have. So let's let's say I've seen it go as low as 850. So let's say 900 foot pounds of, of energy. So you're losing a little, you know, you're losing a little bit on the, uh, um, you, you're losing a little bit on the 10 and a half inch. You're losing a whole lot on the on the seven and a half inch. Um, my thought on the seven and a half inches, even though I love this, this is a great novelty. I, I love shooting this. Um, when I show, I have a nine millimeter AR pistol, right? So th with the nine millimeter, when I ran, you know, seven and a half inches, when I ran that through the chronograph, that got 400 foot pounds. Okay. So, cause now nine millimeters is usually shot out of a much shorter barrel, right? That's usually shot, let's say out of a four inch barrel, right? So when you shoot the nine millimeter now out of seven and a half inches, you're gaining a little extra, you know, a little extra energy. So that comes up to 400 foot pounds. Okay, this drops down to 650. The difference between my nine millimeter AR pistol and this is a difference, a difference in energy of uh, about 240 foot pounds. Okay, so the interesting thing there is, you know, the the nine millimeter AR pistol, you're you know, it's still it's still a, a decent round for indoor shooting, right? Um, and you don't have all that extra noise, all that extra. You don't have the extra muzzle flash. Is if you're gonna if you have to be at seven and a half inches, is it worth gaining the extra two hundred and forty foot pounds just to use a five five six caliber, right? So you got the extra noise, extra extra um, flash. In my opinion, no. Okay, if I have to, if I decide that I need to use a seven and a half inch barrel, uh, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use that in a nine millimeter. Okay, uh, now there's, you got to test the gun, you got to make sure it's reliable. The, the 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 issue that I sometimes see with nine millimeter ARs with the shorter barrels is sometimes you have issues with the with the hammer resetting. So you, so you got to test it a lot to make sure that the gun's going to be reliable. Of course, you're always going to have your backup pistol. Um, but uh, my thought on that is that, you know, if you have to be at seven and a half inches, you know, maybe moving down to a nine millimeter instead of the five, five, six, uh, that might be a, a really good idea. Now, the, the benefit of, of the five, five, six is if you go outdoors, right, if, the, if this thing ends up outdoors, okay, um, and you shoot a shooting, let's say, at 300 yards, okay, uh, the nine millimeter is really not going to, I mean, not that it won't get there. But it's your holdover is so much that you're gonna have a hard time, you know, hitting a man-sized target. Okay, I've done videos on that. I've tested it out. I mean, I can get to 300 yards with a nine millimeter AR. Um, I, one time I was able to get to it consistently. The second time I shot it, I was not. With the seven and a half inch barrel, when I shot this at 300 yards, I got a seven inch grouping. Okay, it was a seven, 77 grain bullet, but I got a seven inch group on this. I did a video on this, right? Look up the video. I did a seven inch group with a seven and a half inch barrel uh, at 300 yards. And when I shot it at 400 yards, I got nine out of 10 hits on a man sized target. So the target was about 22 inches wide, about, about this tall. I got nine out of uh, 10 hits on that. Then I, from, then I went out, out to 500 yards. 
at 500 yards, I got uh, seven out of 10 hits on a man sized target. Okay, so 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 this if you if you're going to be indoors and there's a good chance you're going to be shooting at distance outdoors, yeah, the nine millimeter is not going to be cutting it. If you if you think that you're going to be shooting past you know past 200 yards, okay. I mean, I can get out to 200 yards with a nine millimeter, but past that, I there's there's a a massive drop off. So so this will get you there. Now the question becomes, how much power does this? How much energy does this have at the 300 yards, 400 yards, or 500 yards? Um, well, my answer to that is at 500 yards, right? If I can put effective hits and you know seven out of ten hits on the man size target at 500 yards, I mean I would consider that effective accuracy. Again, that was with the 77 grain bullets. I would consider that effective accuracy at that distance. Okay, I only need to wound the threat. Okay. Uh, because if I wound them, they're not going to, that's going to make them go away. Okay. If, if somebody is shot, even, even with a 22 at that type, at that type of a distance, right at three, four, 500 yards, if they're wounded, they're not going to attack forward. They're going to look to get out of there. Okay. Uh, which is different than let's say if you wound somebody at a hundred yards or 200 yards, um, at that distance, them retreating may not be an option because if they retreat, they're just going to get shot in the back. So at two, at at, at 100 yards and 200 yards, um, you, I, I think that you need, you, you absolutely need a more lethal round um, because it, their mindset is that hey, if we retreat, we're going to get shot in the back. Even though we're wounded, our best chance of survival is to continue this attack forward because we don't want to get shot in the back. At least if we attack forward take out whatever is in front of us that's going to increase our survival chance okay so so that's that plays a little bit into the psychology of you know getting wounded at 200 yards versus getting wounded at 500 yards 500 yards you know they, they can get out of that 200 yards you know that's it's kind of iffy which way do they go do they go forward or do they go back you know at 100 yards unless unless you're in the woods over here you you almost have to attack forward, right? There's there's you know, um, you know at, at 100 yards you might be able to retreat here, but if this was an open field, at at 100 yards if this is like an open let's say an open farm field or something, uh, uh, you know there's no place to go. Okay, um, you're not going to be able to retreat to anything because you're going to get shot in the back as you're retreating. Um, so that that plays a little bit in, into the into the psychology there. So um, my my thoughts on this is. It, for a self-defense situation, this I don't have an issue. I don't have a problem with the accuracy of this, and I've tested it, right? I, I've, I've, I've put up the videos where I'm shooting this at 300 yards, 400 yards, and 500 yards. I don't have a problem with the accuracy at distance. I don't have a problem uh, with the with with the um, uh, the power, right? The penetrating ability or the energy of of these rounds at those distances because at those distances i just want to make them go away i don't need to get you know kills that are just going to dr drop them and immediately incapacitate them okay so i don't have a problem with the power i don't have you know problem with the ability for this thing to shoot at distance my problem is that when you're indoors right in that cqb environment uh, this is annoyingly loud okay and distracting and if you don't have good ear protection um, you know, you're basically flashbanging yourself, right? It feels like, like you're getting, like your brain is getting punched through your ears. Um, and what that does is it slows down your reflexes. Okay. You're not going to be as fast. You're not, you, you're going to, you, you know, you, you're going to, and you know, I've shot these guns with minimal ear protection, right? Like if I shoot these guns with just earplugs, okay. In an outdoor environment, uh, it, you know, it, it does like slow, like it, it becomes a distraction where like your thinking process actually slows down. Um, so I've seen it. I've also noticed it in other people while they were seeing, I asked, when I asked them questions, their, their ability to answer you back, uh, slows down a little bit, right? Because they're getting kind of brain punched. Okay. Um, so that's, it's, it's, it has, it's, it's stunning, right? That's why they use flashbangs, uh, because it stuns people. Okay. And that, that's the effect that I have noticed. Uh, with these short barrels, if you're shooting them uh, indoors. Um, so, and the thing is, the, the whole idea with this is that it was designed, the whole concept behind this is that it's supposed to be better indoors because of the noise and, and the flash. I don't think it is better indoors. I think that most people would be better off with just a 16 inch barrel. Now, the question becomes why do like uh, special forces teams all seem to use? Uh, these short barrels, right? They all they all have short barrels, ten inches, twelve inches. Um, 
well, they, they almost always have a suppressor on it, okay? So they have the suppressor on it. Uh, that reduces the flash. That reduces the noise, okay? Uh, and the, the problem with the suppressor is that it lengthens the gun, okay? So if you've got a seven and a half, you put a suppressor on it, well, now you're up to 10 inches, okay? So you got yourself a 10 inch gun. If you got a 10 and a half inch barrel, you put a suppressor on it, well, now you're up to 14 inches, okay? So, so I think that the suppressor, to some extent, offsets the, the length the length of the suppressor offsets whatever benefit you're getting out of it uh you still end up a cup maybe two inches shorter or, th or whatever you know a couple of inches shorter um is is it worth you know are those extra two inches or three inches of of overall length reduction right is, is there a real benefit to that well for special forces teams to be using it, there must be, okay? I'll accept that. There must be a benefit, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. However, let's consider how they are training. Uh, the way they train, they do like these time drills uh, that they repeat over and over and over again. Uh, and they're, on a, they're working with a team, so they're on a stack, one behind the other. So if you're on a stack, yeah, it, it, there's a benefit to having the shorter barrel so that, you know, the, the barrels aren't getting like all tangled up with each other. Um, so for the way that they train, right, a whole team moving through a tight, let's say, doorway into a room under a timed conditions, the way they, they practice, okay, where everybody needs to knows where they're supposed to be and they're actually counting the seconds. Yeah, I'm sure that they're seeing a benefit, okay. For the way that we're most likely to use these guns in a self-defense type of situation, we're most likely not going to be doing room clearing. Okay? Most likely we're going to be taking a position of concealment or cover um, you know, with our family or friends or whoever behind us. Okay? Um, so we're not doing room clearing. Okay? Now, if we are doing room clearing, most likely we're going to be doing it. Let's say we got to get to our kids or to our family, whatever. We're doing it most likely by ourselves. So again, we don't have issues with the guns getting tangled up. Okay, and there's effective techniques for shortening the rifle, right? So basically, you can bring it over the top of your shoulder like this. That'll shorten the rifle up, or bring it to the outside of your arm or under your arm like that. Okay, my favorite. I, I prefer to bring it over the top over here. You know, that, that's how I prefer to. I got to shorten up. If I have a full size 16 inch barrel and I got to shorten it up, I'll bring it here. But from here, I can just lock into position here, right? So from here, here, okay. So that's that's the preferred method that I that I use on a six-inch barrel for shortening up. Um, you know, given the fact that you're not moving with a whole team that and where it's being timed and everything, I, I think that that that's going to be a better, a more benefit to everyone. And then if you have a situation that does go outdoors, you know, now you've got because maybe you're not using 77 grain bullets like I use when I use when I shoot 300 yards, right? Uh, 400 yards and 500 yards. Maybe you're just using, you know, uh, you know, like 193 or or, or green tips or something, right? Um, so if, if you're not using match grade ammunition, if you're going to end up shooting past 300 yards, the the, the longer 16 inch barrel is going to be a benefit as far as the accuracy. I think you know you'll be able to get uh you, you'll probably be able to take tighter shots because I had to I had to go to those 77 grain bolts to be able to get that seven inch group at 300 yards with this seven and a half inch barrel, right? Uh, so, so, you know, so the point is that if you're using the 16 inch barrel, you don't have to use, you know, the, the Gucci ammo, right? You can just use cheaper ammo and you'll get there. Okay. Maybe you won't have super tight groups, but you'll be able to hit a man sized target. Uh, so, so there's my thoughts on this. Um, just opinion. Uh, but again, I, I get to shoot these guns. I shoot every day. I have different length guns. Um, I have, you know, seven and a half, uh, I have, uh, 10 and a halves, I have 16s, I have 18 inch barrels. I've got nine, the nine millimeter versions, right? I even got nine millimeter and four inches. Okay. Um, if it has to be a seven and a half inch barrel, I would probably switch over to a nine millimeter, uh, because you know, the, yeah, I'm losing a little bit more energy, but I'm still at 400 foot pounds, 400 foot pounds, is basically a 40 cal, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm, I'm using a 40 cal that that has basically a, a, a you know that I can stabilize basically okay um, so you know 400 foot pounds is not terrible for being indoors you know for, for CQB type of work okay um, 
you know, so th that's my opinion. On that. Oh, be before I go, I just want to show you guys real quick. Uh, with the seven and a halves, I like to use the single point sling. Uh, it, it, if I go to ten and a half, I, I'd rather have the two point sling. But the, for for the seven and a half, the single point sling works really nice because I can just flip this around my back like that, really easy. I can retrieve this really easy. Um, if I need to. Because I could, if I could put this through the other arm, but if I need to just hang this up temporarily and get this out of my way, I can just hook it up like that. That kind of gets this out of my way. So if I need to run or something, um, so for for the uh, for the uh, seven and a half, I, I really like the, the single point string. I mean, if you're running, this is gonna want to hit you in the nuts. But you just flip this around to your side. Now it's like a holster, right? You got this off to your side a little bit, or, you know, off the side behind you. Um, you know, you can, and this works fine from either side because I can put my other arm through it too depending on if I can put this arm through it okay so with this arm over here right now if I want it to go off to the side you know now basically it's got to go to my left side so if I come up here now I, I'm pretty ambidextrous I can shoot on either side so if I don't want this interfering let's say with my my side arm I can throw this to this side and basically just know that I got to come up come up lefty okay um, or I can stay righty on this side, right? And now if I want to get this out of my way, I just flip that through like this. And this is a very pretty comfortable position. The gun is pretty light, so it's not, it's not going to tire me out. So a, a couple of things I just wanted to throw in there, uh, as far as using the, uh, as far as using the, uh, the seven and a half inch barrel. I mean, it is, you know, it is very light. You know, this is something that, you know, it, it's definitely very light to maneuver around with. Okay, so if it wasn't for the for the insane sound, uh, I would be like all for this, all right? Because this is a very light, easy to handle gun. I, I really like that aspect of it, but but the reality is that it's just so annoyingly loud that um, I don't think that it's it's very practical um, for most of us to do any cqb type of work with it because the the concussion is basically just like brain punching us okay uh and, and the interesting thing is the concussion especially if you're indoors doesn't just come in through your ears the the concussion wave also goes in through your body it'll come in through your eyes so even if you doubled up on ear protection if you shoot hundreds of rounds of this stuff you'll still get a headache because that that wave is still coming through your body and it's still getting to your brain and you know you'll, you'll you know i can tell you guys firsthand you will still get uh, a mild headache it's like i mean it's not anything permanent or anything uh as long as long as you've got some ear protection on if you don't have ear protection on yeah you will that you can definitely give yourself long-term uh uh a permanent ear damage shooting this thing so i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope it answers the question again it's just opinion on this uh but i think that the short barrels are not Oh, this thing is like kind of okay yeah I, I hate having things in my ears like that this is the only time i put the earplugs in my ears uh if i'm shooting um if i'm shooting these these short barrels otherwise i, I like i like using just the earmuffs um but yeah I, I don't think that the benefits that you get benefits of maneuverability outweigh the insane loud uh, the insanely loud sound so uh thanks for watching i'll talk to you all soon